So you can turn your video off. Hello, everyone. And uh, if you're joining us for Celebration 32 Live, uh, winner show and tell, we're going to start the presentation in just a minute or two to get everyone a chance to, to join. So stay close. My sister lives in North Carolina. So I think it's a few minutes after two. I think we'll get started here. Um, I appreciate everyone joining us. Um, my name is Mark Allison. I'm the editor of Rug Hooking Magazine. Uh, and I wanna welcome you to the latest in a series of live stream events um, that we present in support of Rug Hooking Magazine and the Rug Hooking Magazine Book Club. Um, today we're celebrating Celebration 32. Uh, and that's our annual showcase of the finalists in our yearly rug hooking competition. Um, and joining us are six of those finalists, and we're so happy that they could take the time out to, to be with us. We're going to meet them very shortly. Um, they're here to talk about the inspiration behind the rugs uh, and to answer questions about their background uh, and creative process. So uh, as we're going along, if you want to use the chat to post questions, we'll try to get to as many as we can. Um, we're going to meet the um, rug hookers individually, kind of one by one, and show you their rugs that appeared in celebration. And as we're doing that, um, feel free to um, type in your questions and, and we'll see what we can do. If you have any questions for everyone in general, um, We'll try to leave time at the end of this presentation to cover that. Um, but first, I want to remind you that by tuning into this event, uh, you're eligible for some special subscription offers and book club offers. Um, and you can check out the website, rugcookingmagazine.com, for that information. So um, you'll see on the screen, we have a promo code that you can use uh, for a discount on the book club. And the website is there. Um, book club members um, will save and they'll be um, the first in line to get our new book, The Art of Mothering by Karen Miller, uh, which you have the cover there. So that, that's our fall release. Um, so you'll want to pick that up. Uh, and let's kick things off. Um, this is our first rug, um, Sunset Calling that appeared in uh, Celebration 32. It's by Susan Ferraro. Um, so I'll ask Susan to, to join us. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we appreciate you have, uh, taking the time. Um, we're looking at your beautiful rug, a monochromatic piece. Um, and basically, you know, I want you to, to talk about the inspiration behind the piece um the story behind it um any special techniques um you you use to create it um and we'll go from there 
Okay. Uh, well, this is sun Sunset Calling, and it was originally a uh, part of a nine-piece series about island life living old and new. And um, I live on Bailey Island in Maine, and um, I decided to um, submit this piece because it's my favorite piece in the series. It's my first black and white. And um, Les McNally, who's the gentleman in the picture, is my neighbor, next door neighbor. And we live right on the ocean. Uh, every summer, he plays the conch at sunset and his daughter and <laughs> her husband uh, also own a schooner and they sail by and it, it's a beautiful celebration. So uh, I did all of the piece um, basically in 23 different colors of black and gray. Uh, the, that, the border is a very small six cut hound's tooth fabric. And uh, it's really dimensional. It's hard to see it uh, here, but in real life, I actually um, hooked the whole piece except for the conch and Les's hand. And then I, uh, felted, hand felted the conch and sewed it on and Trupunto stuffed it. And I hand hooked the hand and uh, sewed it onto the conch. So there's really three levels of um, dimension to this piece. Yeah, it, the, the, the photograph really does not do it justice. It's a beautiful photograph and you can see that, but uh, I was lucky enough to see this rug in person at Souter Village and the, the, the dimensionality of the shell uh, and the softness and color of the shell um, really stands out. It's, it's, it's beautifully done. Thank you. The shell is a whole different, mm -hmm. uh, there's really three different um, um, kind of uh, textures going on the outer framing, uh, the hooking of uh, the yarn and the shell, which is really, really soft. So it goes from soft down into a heavier uh, scale. And even his beard and uh, areas around his face are kind of show his, you know, gruffiness, so to speak, of being a real <laughs> mainer. Has Les seen the, the rug? I'm assuming he has. He did, yes. He, he just saw it recently, as a matter of fact. Um, I've sent him lots of notes, but he doesn't really do emails. Uh, so uh, <laughs> he was, he was uh, in tears. He was pretty happy. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Let me ask how you got started in, in rug cooking. Um, just before I moved to Maine, about mm -hmm. uh, 15 years ago, um, I became very interested in the technique of rug hooking, especially the Waldo Burrow uh, rug hooking, which is actually really high loops that are uh, curved or shaped um, and cut into certain shapes. And Waldo Burrow is kind of up the street, just up from the street from me. So it was a real mm -hmm. thrill to be able to see these pieces in uh, person. So, you know, just uh, going from my uh, fiber art works from 30 years ago of um, quilted wall hangings that were all dimensional, I followed that suit with dimension and almost all my pieces have a dimensional uh, look to them. And um, this is what I do now, full time. That's wonderful. I, I, I knew I'd uh, forget something and I neglected to give a little bit of information about you, Susan, at, at the start. So um, I want to tell our viewers that uh, you've been creating fiber art professionally for, for more than 25 years. Um, in your home state of Maine, you hook rugs, make sculptures and wall hangings. Um, and your original uh, designs illustrate a combination of traditional rug hooking with unique 
dimensional features. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, I welcome. hope to stick around. And if anybody has any questions uh, for Susan, we, we hope to get to them after we meet uh, the other uh, participants. So thanks again, Susan. Thanks, Mark. Um, our second rug is Black and White by Tatiana Nodal. Thank you for joining us, Tatiana. Um, Tatiana began rug hooking in 2008, and she has made more than 180 hooked pieces. Um, her favorite style of rug hooking was fine cut with sculpting, uh, but she also, she also enjoys other styles, uh, especially making bags to match clothing. So um, for those of you who have Celebration 32, you'll know that this rug um, we used on the cover. I think it makes just a wonderful cover, um, very graphic. Um, uh, it just looked beautiful when we put it on there. So, uh, Tatiana, um, thanks for joining us. And thank you. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about where the idea for this rug came from. Um, geometric design always was a pilot for me. Actually, in my uh, past life, I was a um, chemical engineer. Okay. So that my time, uh, you drawing not by computer, you drawing by the hands. So that um, this rug, I my attention was create 3D without illusion, without really 3D. So it's flat. So I like the sculpting, but this rug I um, resist not doing. So the usually color plan um, entire rug, but this one is uh, not. So I begin with three colors, actually. I begin with gray, white, mm -hmm. and black. After tries many times, I figure out, no, the gray is not working. So I stopped and end up with the black. So this is, I think that's it. So I try to uh, do the background, the color, and like uh, this is the rust color is very, I like the, this, so I think that's it. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed that um, when you look closely at this rug, and again, this was at Souter Village too, we, we, we were great to, to uh, lucky to have this there, that there's actually three different colors of red in the background, not two. Um, the center square is kind of a richer red, really adds dimensionality to the whole piece. Um, I would like to add that it's a uh, rug is very it's attractive because it's line really straight. Mm -hmm. You notice this, yeah. But this is what's challenging. And I developed a special technique to make the straight line. It's right. mostly working for the number three. And um, I think in the celebration that I described this um, uh, technique. So. And, and that helps you get the straight, precise oh, line. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, held it's... the straight lines, yes. Mm -hmm. We did have a question come through, and I'm not uh, sure whether this um, applies to Susan's rug or Tatiana's rug, but I'm going to ask you both if you could answer. Um, the question is, what size cut did you use for the hooking portion of this beautiful oh, the, Yeah, I, I use only a size three in this. OK. Yeah. And Susan, or if um, if you want to answer that too, this may question may apply to your rug. Um, what size cut did you use? Uh, I use almost exclusively yarn in okay. whatever size, shape, and color, and glitz or non glitz or um, that's that's about it. But the um, the border was a six cut. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank Again. you. Um, and Tatiana, how did you start rug hooking? Um, somebody mentioned uh, a, a day or two ago about how um, you've completed 180 hook pieces. That's pretty impressive. Um, that, you're a productive artist. <laughs> how did you get oh, started? Yeah, uh, the friend invited me to the group in uh, uh, Sudbury in Ontario, and uh, she gave me a piece of burlap, the hook and uh, strip of wool, and uh, tell me, oh, yeah, pull it. 
draw something and pull it. So this is all my beginning. Uh, we actually pretty far north so from Toronto. It's 450 kilometers. So we do not have the teachers. Now I am certified the teacher, but mm -hmm. in my time when I beginning, there are no teachers around. So most of my technique that I figure out myself and all whole first year, I uh, did the very small picture. So I'm like uh, 12, nine to eight. Okay. And it's all whole year with 180 after. Yes. But um, the as soon as some woman came with number three card, I understand this is what I like. So after this, it's all goes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate you, you taking the time you. to join us. Thank you. And our next rug um, is Rebecca by Mary McGrath. Um, and this, again, these are such beautiful pieces. Um, this is a fairly large rug. Um, and Mary McGrath has been hooking a uh, rug since 2002. And she yeah. loves working in values and fine cuts. So welcome, Mary. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for having me and for, for hosting this uh, wonderful get together for all of us rug hookers. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, so like you said, this is a large piece. Um, mm -hmm. It is an original design by B. Brock. And um, I had originally actually ordered the smaller version of this rug. And when I received it, I thought, no, you know what? I, re I really do passionately love large rugs. And I went ahead and ordered the larger of the two. And um, I feel by working in, um, you know, in the larger motifs, I was able to achieve, um, you know, the, the depth and, and the values uh, that I was looking for, which I wasn't sure if I would be able to um, in, in the smaller version of this rug. Um, I absolutely love the design that B. Brock came up with. Uh, mm -hmm. So many of her designs are absolutely gorgeous. Um, the, the design that she created has lovely balance to it and uh, the repetition of the motifs. It's just, it's comfortable. Um, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's lovely to look at just as, as the design itself, so. Mm -hmm. Any particular challenges with, with this rug? Um, um, you mentioned the green, using the green, the color. Yeah, um, yeah. So, you know, it, initially when I dyed the color for it, um, the, I, I love greens. And mm -hmm. um, when I first saw the color though, I'm like, ooh, I don't know if this is really, you know, going to necessarily work until I started mm -hmm. working it into the rug. And because the, the color palette really is very muted. Um, and again, quite, quite a change from uh, the traditional style that B. Brock tends to work in her, her um, designs and, and hooked rugs tend to be bold and vibrant and mm -hmm. beautiful colors. Um, so this, this is a twist on that, um, dealing more in the muted colors, but for sure that, that yellow green, um, in the end, it did end up being the, the perfect choice, I think, um, you it's know, a... versus when I first looked at it. And sometimes that's really, I think, what you need to do sometimes, um, you know, just just hooking it in and and seeing, you know, does it does it work? Does it fit? And um, yeah, it th thankfully it did. Otherwise, I would have gone back to the dye pot and started all, all over again. <laughs> it's a real distinctive color, too. I mean, it's yeah. not. Yeah, uh, it, it adds um, really something special to this. Yeah, room. thank you. I, I imagine that working with colors too, it's really tough to know until you see the other other colors surrounding it. Right, um, and that that is so true, like. Mark. And mm -hmm. and I think as as rug hookers and artists in general, I I think that that is a lot of it. Um, how the colors play on each other, and you're right, looking at an individual color by itself. Oftentimes, you know, it looks one way, but when you start mixing it with the other colors that are going to appear near it, it, it mm -hmm. really does have a way of transforming and, and changing. And I think that's some of the most, you know, exciting things. Sometimes you'll look at a color and you'll say it's blue and then it goes up against something else and it looks purple. Right. You know, and I, I just, I, that's one of the things that I absolutely love about, about color and, and how, it, how it plays and how it gets together with, uh, with its cohorts and, and rugs. Yeah, you can plan it out, um, but um, there's a bit of an unknown as to what's going to happen until you start start putting it together. Yeah, um, so true. How did you start rug hooking, Mary? So 
I started in uh, 2002. We were on vacation. Um, at this time, I had um, one child. He was two years old. So we were uh, vacationing in northern Wisconsin. And I went to a quilt shop. And there was this lovely rug. It had crows in it. I absolutely love crows. And um, it was a more primitive style rug. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is that? And so I um, asked one of the shop ladies there and she's like, oh, that's a hooked rug. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to learn about this. But the other side of me is like, oh my gosh, I have a two-year-old and I have so many things going on in my life, but I couldn't get it out of my head. And I think that's probably one of the, the true um, tells that you know you, you have to try it. This, this is something that you have to do um, and mm -hmm. learn more about. So um, I came back from vacation and happened to actually have a neighbor who had taken a class in rug hooking and she had a kit that she had started. She says, it's absolutely not for me, but she's like, I can kind of explain to you the basics behind it. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely, um, absolutely fell in love with it. I, you know, I feel like it's, it's a passion. It's an obsession. So um, th thankful, thankful I stumbled across it. <laughs> A question came through for you, and I saw somebody answered it. So the designer of your rug is again. Yes. If you want to repeat the name, B, uh, it's B Brock's design. B Brock. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, it. Mark. Thank you so much. Have a good yeah. rest of your day. And our our fourth rug, um, popcorn and paper hat by Capri Boyle Jones. Um, Capri is owner of Capri Boyle, uh, uh, I'm sorry, <clears throat> Capri Boyle Rug Studio in Florida. Uh, she's a McGowan certified instructor and also a member of the Association of Traditional Hooking Artists and also a member of the Guild of McGowan Hook Crafters. So welcome Capri, so glad you could join us. Thank you, Mark. And I'll note that this rug um, captured third place in our contest. Um, they were all finalists that appeared in the magazine, but, but the judges uh, scored this um, as the third place winner. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and I understand, tell us where this, the idea for this rug came from. Well, it came from a photograph that I had taken a few years ago when I was doing an art show. And um, Amelia is the, the little girl and her mm -hmm. mother was shopping in my booth, but she was standing just outside the booth. <laughs> she had had all of her activities for that day and she was quite content. She had made her paper hat. She had made her roses that are plopped in different places of her hat. She has a, a jewel on her um, hand that she had collected somewhere along the way. And then her bag of popcorn that she has. She was so content just standing there while her mom shopped. <laughs> so expressive, a wonderful photograph, um, and then a wonderful, you know, portrayal of that photograph. Um, Thank you. And uh, you can see the Florida sunshine um, very, very well. Very well. Um, that's what we do. Um, and I have hooked this on a, another fabric. It's the backing that you see, which a or again portrays the sunshine but you can see the shadows the shadow mm -hmm. on the ground the heavy shadows under the popcorn under her hat um, the way her arms are held and it creates that high contrast and it really gives you a good example of when you have high light then you're going to have heavy shadows right right her face is in shadow, but it's still very expressive and you can see it. I mean, it's not just muted. It, 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 there's color in there. There's color in the shadows. Yes. Well, th I think this was midday. So the sun was overhead or just behind, slightly behind her looking at the angle of the, the shadow on the ground, but a lot of light. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned you were in an art show uh, and you took uh, this. Were you displaying your rugs? At this art yes, show? yes. Okay. I sell my artwork. I do art shows. I'm in a couple of galleries as well as teaching rug cooking. Okay, okay. So how did you get started? A friend introduced me. I was uh, looking for rugs for my floors of my house and she said, make your own. I said, mm -hmm. how do I do that? She introduced me to a teacher and I've never stopped since. <laughs> That's good advice. Make your own. <laughs> a question um, 
Somebody asked, describe the background fabric, please. It's a cotton boucle, a suiting boucle, like you would make uh, skirts, jackets out of. You can get it in different textures. You can get it in different blends. So there's, there are wool blends, but there are cotton blends. There are also wool, cotton, and linen blends. But it's a weave. It's an even weave. Mm -hmm. Do you often work from photographs? I sometimes do. Uh, sometimes I work from my head. Sometimes I do a combination of the two, take a photograph and change it up to some idea that I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I take a lot of photographs for inspiration. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. If you have any questions, uh, wait, some just popped on the, my board here uh, with the cotton boot clay. How did you frame or mount it? I wrapped it around a canvas. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank um, you. Wait, I, I, I'm going to hold you again because some okay. more questions are, are, are popping up on my screen. Which portion of this rug did you find most challenging? I think the most challenging was editing out information because when you're working from a photograph, well, you have a certain amount or a lot of information there. And if you're going to hook it or create a piece of artwork, you want to decide what is important to you and what story do you want to tell? Yeah, you don't necessarily like, well, I have a photo and it shows this and it shows this, I have to show it all. I mean, you decide there's a lot of, of creativity um, and decisions that have to, have to be made. Um, another question, did you sew the hooking onto the background fabric? No, I hooked directly on the fabric. Okay. Um, any tips about hooking the popcorn and its bag? Um, and, and boy, that is such a realistic, um, you, you know, that's a, a bag full of popcorn. You can oh, almost smell you. it. <laughs> thank you. Well, you know, first I had the photograph to look at, but it's mm -hmm. basically a swatch that uh, a yellow swatch that goes from yellow to a golden brown. And it's the darkest values of the swatch that really make the difference that give you the dimension of the popcorn. But then also you have to look at the bag and notice that to keep it dimensional, that you don't see that darkness on the sides because the bag goes around and it's moving away from you and you're not seeing the same information. Mm -hmm. So using your photograph, if you have one, mm -hmm. gives you an, an aid to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Really effective, really uh, beautifully done. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, next, we have uh, Nancy Tun. Um, oh. Her drug is Sand Sea Boardwalk and Me. Um, Nancy found her way into rug hooking in 2009 uh, when she saw someone hooking with yarn. Um, and she's a set designer. She works on Broadway and internationally uh, with London-based designers. I'm so happy you could join us. Um, and I'll note that this rug uh, was our first place winner in Celebration 32. So congratulations, uh, just a beautiful rug. Um, Maybe uh, some of our viewers saw this at Souter Village, a large rug and just so striking. Um, Thank you. What can you tell us about it? Well, it's interesting coming uh, on after Capri because a lot of uh, what she said about working from photographs uh, applies <laughs> to me as well. I work, I work only from photographs and, uh, uh, and yarn. And uh, this rug, uh, what, what made this rug interesting for me is that previously I worked from photographs that I've taken through my life, through my travels, mm -hmm. through my lives. And not often I wonder what am I going to do with these photographs? I've taken all these photographs. Uh, and then I started uh, hooking rugs and they became sort of the source material. This was the first time that I ever was walking around with my camera and went, oh, that would make an interesting rug and specifically took a picture for the rug. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this concerns me because now when I, whenever I look at pictures and look at something, I, I go double think it before I take the picture now. It's like, <laughs> well, am I going to have to make a rug from this? You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so anyway, this started with a picture. Um, 
And a picture I, of you, I'll say. It's, oh, it's, yes, it's yeah, my yeah. shadow on the boardwalk in Cape May. And I've gone to Cape May to go to the rug show that happens down there with the school, the Cape May School in New Jersey, mm -hmm. where I live. And uh, uh, done with yarn. I basically work in uh, wool three ply. Um, I, I use the cheapest yarn available, <laughs> wool. And um, uh, going. where do I go from there? Oh, uh, working with this. I do it, did it with yarn, like I said, and uh, I started by doing the boards and I started by use, putting this on the frame. I have an 18 by 18 inch frame and started hooking. And even though I knew I had to hook uh, in the line of the boards, I would hook sections of it, you know? Mm -hmm. But then I think, I think even before I hit the shadow, I realized that, in, that I needed to actually hook the full line of the board. Like take a line at the top and take it all the way down and to do that successfully, I had to take it off the uh, frame. So I hooked this totally off the frame so I didn't have to keep changing it around because this is about three foot by four foot. Mm -hmm. And I do hook big, but generally I can hook in sections and then move it. This one I had to hook all the way through to get it to work. And, and primarily to get the shadow to work because I didn't want to outline the shadow. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that line because that line didn't exist. Um, uh, so I needed to really think it through as I hit, as the line of the board started passing through the shadow, I had to think that through. Now, Capri was talking about editing out um, information, and I find that I edit out information by the color I choose, like by the color planning. Okay. Uh, I actually consider this a monochromatic on some level. This is only a warm gray, a dark gray, and a yellow and a brown and shades of those four colors. Uh, I worked, uh, I know we were talking earlier, Susan uh, had the 23 colors. I, I had 16 colors in this. And part of my hooking is I call it making up the rules, determining what the rules are. And I spend the early part of the rug determining how I'm gonna do that particular yellow going into a brown going into, which gets repeated, you know, mm -hmm. or going into sand and I make up the rules. And then as I go onward, I repeat those rules. Um, the other thing I do when hooking um, is that I, I don't put away the picture. I work directly from the picture, but I put the picture out of my mind. Um, I, I think, you know, when you, when you go to a lot of classes, they talk about seeing. And to my mind, it's like, I look at what is directly in front of my eyes and I hook it. The fact that it's a board, the fact that it's a shadow, the fact that it's sand is not necessarily part of my thinking. It is my thinking as it sort of comes together and I look at it hanging up and I go, how do I adjust this? How do I change my rules to mm -hmm. accommodate that? But when I'm hooking, I don't, I just hook what I'm seeing directly in front of me and I'm trying to actually hook it as close to the picture as I can. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I sort of, as, uh, as I've been thinking about this recently, I, I've sort of, and since this one, this one was sort of a turning point on, on a lot of, not turning point, but a thinking point on a lot of levels. Um, that, uh, well, one, one is why do I use yarn? Now, partly I've never used wool, partly I'm incredibly cheap and the whole wool process and the machinery involved with it um, is very expensive. But when I saw someone hooking with yarn, it literally blew my mind. And I now realize that uh, well, well, a teacher that I had a long time ago once said to me that I saw the world in black and white. And I thought at the time, it's sort of, I was like, what? Doesn't everyone see the world the same way? Just interpret, you know? And I had realized through time that people actually do see the world differently. And, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to un understand what you're seeing and really look at it and, and interpret what you're seeing. Uh, but the, the yarn, I think I realized I don't necessarily consider myself a textile artist, uh, as so many of these other people do that work with the felting and glitter, you know, mm -hmm. work with different things and creating things from the texture of a textile. The yarn for me are points of color, uh, just the points of color and the points, uh, oh, getting back to the black and white comment, I have through time begun to realize that black and white means that I see the world in high contrast, mm -hmm. uh, one thing against the other. And that's why the points of color do that for me. It's like a point, a point, a point. It's like I'm not blending colors. I'm putting things against each other and getting getting the contrast. Mm -hmm. um, a few so, questions. 
a few questions have come through. Uh, okay. Is it hooked or punched? Hooked. Hooked. Um, and did you sketch the image on the backing before you began hooking? Oh, yes. I take that picture. Well, and this is something I wanted to say. Generally, I make almost all my decisions are in the picture, okay. whether I knew it was going to become a rug or not. It was what my eye saw. And I think I work in the theater and I think I'm discovering that my eye always sees stories. Like so many of the pictures that I choose to take have a story. So I do take that picture. Depending on the picture, I will do work on it in uh, Photoshop. Mm -hmm. I will, uh, I have to get posterize it, which I think flattens out a lot of the color, which appeals to my contrasting sensibility. And then I, uh, I usually blow it up black and white, full scale. I trace that generally on tracing paper. And I make, and this is also how I eliminate detail as well as through this process. And then I trace the tracing paper with a red dot and okay. trace the red dot onto the backing. So I have traced the entire picture, mm -hmm. but through the various steps, it gets edited, you know, as I think about contrast against contrast and what it is I'm looking for. Right. You mentioned in this image, the hair, the blowing hair, which really, <laughs> you know, adds so much to the image. I'm assuming that was in the photograph. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and to my but, mind, I mean, I'm actually very happy with this. I really, I really mm -hmm. see the shadow and I see me. And uh, it's the, for me, the blowing hair makes it because I think the blowing hair really works in the shadow format. But <coughs> Question, um, do you dye all your own yarn? Yes, I do. Yes, okay. I do. And, and uh, when I was talking about the, uh, well, I do just want to say this as well. I dye my yarn. Usually I do a, I work from a half scale picture. I mean, I blow it up full scale. I blow a picture up 38, you know, three feet by four feet off my mm -hmm. little eight and a half by 11 sheets and tape them all together. I did say it was cheap, right? And uh, <laughs> then I blow up generally half size, the color that I worked from. And uh, I, I first learned how to dye. I mean, I taught myself how to dye from uh, Ingrid Hieronymus, the primary fusion. And I use all her uh, recipes, but her, her package comes with like 50 different colors in eight sampled swatches. So I usually put the colored photograph down and I just start placing the colored swatches on to sort of figure out how I'm going to dye it. And then I figure out the dye Interesting. and I figure out the uh, yardage of the yarn and that kind of thing. Well, it's such a beautiful image. Congratulations. Thank um, you. And thank you for joining us. Um, and um, hopefully other people can get to see this 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 rug live too but uh, the picture does not quite do it justice but no, the picture thank you. is pretty good thank you. so thank you thank you uh and this is uh our last rug um so if you have any questions keep it um keep them coming this is fruits of the earth by amzie collins um amzie has been hooking for uh rugs since 1983 uh, when she learned from her mother um, she's a McGowan certified instructor who teaches her home at her home and she repairs hand hooked rugs. Thank you, Amzi, for joining us. It's great to have you. Yeah, I think I pushed the wrong button because there we go. There we go. We can hear you. There we go. <laughs> I can just see me. I can't see you. I don't know what happened. We can My see husband you. says I pushed too many. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, thanks for having me. Thanks sure for thing. Having me. Um, what can you tell us about uh, what's the story behind this rug? And I'll note that it's behind you too uh, on your uh, on your camera. So, um, and this also was a cover of Rug Hooking Magazine last year. Um, so, a beautiful piece. Yes, uh, I was super surprised and excited that uh, Deborah Smith took my article. I had no idea she would put it on the cover. So when that came, I, I started crying. I was so excited and <laughs> told my husband, look, I'm a cover, I'm, I'm a cover girl. And uh, this, you asked yesterday, you said what? what inspired me to hook this rug. And I told you that it was more desperation than inspiration. <laughs> uh, I had started this 
gosh, 20 something years ago at a teacher training workshop. My teacher was a Shirley Poole. I tried to find any uh, family, but I, I had got, I did not get any response. But anyway, mostly she just wanted to work on the, the face. It was a portrait class. So I had done the eyes and started the face down to the lips. And in her instruction, she had chopped off part of the jawline. So I just went on with what her instructions were. And in Southwest Louisiana, a couple of years ago, uh, we had back-to-back -back hurricanes, floods, uh, freeze, tornadoes, then the pandemic, you name it, we had it. And my husband has a, had a camp up at Toledo Bend about two hours north. So we hung out there and I needed something to work on. You know, when you've been hooking as long as I have, almost 40 years, you've got something in your lap all the time. And when you're finished with it, it's an addiction. You need something in your lap. So I pulled this out and I had some swatches with it and I brought it up to the camp, worked on it. When we'd go back to check on the house, I grabbed some more wool, some more swatches. I'm a number three cut hooker. That's what I was trained on. Uh, my mother and father were hookers and you did not mention anything over a three. You did not mention primitives or wide cuts. It was only uh, Alan Flynn patterns, period. So I really had that beaten into my brain. And so this rug, it, it wasn't hard. It was just kind of tedious. Uh, I ended up running out of her hair swatches or swatches for her hair and just kind of had to marry two swatches together to get her hair filled out. I, I think that was the most uh, tedious and uh, awkward parts for me. Then her dress was also, I just had to pick and choose because the teacher didn't go below, uh, below the girl's uh, neck with, with her instructions or rule or information. So that was all I uh, just kind of make up. The bowl of fruit, I do not really care to hook fruit, but I had all the swatches that you have swatch for a peach, swatch for a plum, swatch for an apple. So that made it a whole lot easier to hook the fruit. And then the wooden bowl that she's, that was all trying to mix and match of whatever. And then on from there were the little scrolls and the background. I had to find something for that. Uh, the letters, uh, the fruits of the earth. Uh, I, I hooked them and then I went back with a little fine piece of yarn and outlined them in a little bluish that would match the dress. So I'm a firm believer of moving the colors around. Uh, if you've got something up here, bring it here and vice versa, move, move your colors around, balance it out. But um, I'm proud of this piece. I was proud that I got in the Rug Hooking Magazine and proud more that I got in Celebrations. It was my first time and Great. I wish my mom and dad were here to know that. So um, I just want to thank y'all for inviting me and do you have any questions or anything? I'll tell you that I was in Kansas City um, last week at the traditional uh, hooking um, the conference biennial and I had a copy of the magazine with this on the cover and a gentleman was looking at it uh, uh, with his wife and she was um, he said I know you don't have that issue she was trying to look at the back issue she had he said, I would remember if you had that issue, and I haven't seen that one before. So uh, he, he was particularly impressed with this memorable image. Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was pretty impressive. 
Well, I, I greatly appreciate uh, well, our six finalists joining us. Um, thank you so much, Amzi. Um, and any questions for the group? Um, we, we had a number here come through. I think we got most of them. Um, let me check here. Um, and again, um, these are the finalists in our annual contest, um, which includes 60 plus rugs um, every year. And if you're a book club member, you know that uh, you have first shot at uh, celebration when it comes out every every year. Um, and here's the offer again um, for book club members. You'll see the promo code. Um, and if you go to rughookingmagazine.com store, um, you can use that promo code and, and, and get a special offer on the book club. So uh, question here, how many rugs were submitted this year for celebration? Um, we have more than 200 um, generally, and I think this year was no exception. Um, we have four judges um, and they diligently work through each of those rugs um, and, and rank them um, uh, through an, uh, an online platform. Um, so I hope that answers your question. A question for Capri, was it difficult to hook on cotton? Did you have to do anything differently? Not for this, this is cotton boucle and it's a weave. Think okay. of Think of your linen, it's not quite as open as the linen. So you, you may struggle or something, but the one thing you wanna be sure of is that you do not pull the threads of that backing because it is part of your final product. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, and I thank everyone for joining us. Um, again, we do this regularly throughout the year. So um, I hope you'll join us. Um, for our next installment. Um, and don't forget to check out the website for your special offers. Thank you.